Tesla says that this city is the blueprint, the global blueprint for battery, solar and wind to replace coal and even nuclear and of course gas as well. Now Elon Musk recently said, in fact around six months ago in an interview, that you can harvest more energy from solar panels on the same land size than you can from a nuclear power reactor. Now that's, that may sound crazy, but actually he was right. And in fact, he shared the math on the spot, which was quite amazing to see. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans, I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. Great to see every single one of you. And I'm just, I love this kind of thing. I love seeing solar batteries and wind just take over and get rid of coal, get rid of gas, get rid of all these toxic fumes in the air. I mean, aside from global warming, which is of course is an issue, but it's not something I really focus on. For me, it's what's more important is actually not poisoning ourselves, you know, not leaving the airs looking thick with the air looking thick with smog, and also just saving money. I mean, every single time we go and put in solar panels wind generation, battery storage, we save money. Oxford University, 200 scholars get together, do a research paper that they studied over 12 months saying the world will save $10 trillion if we accelerate to renewables by 2040, 10 trillion. If it's faster than that, we can save double that amount. It's amazing. Now Tesla actually have a new technology that enables grids to operate purely on renewables. A lot of people say that can't be done. They say, no, 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 you can't be done. There's too much intermittency. There's all these other reasons. All these other reasons, complicated reasons why you can't have a purely renewable grid. Well, yeah, uh, they, they're wrong. Tesla knows this because they have the technology to actually make this happen. In fact, the grid in South Australia uses te Tesla's technology, Tesla's automated electricity technology to make this grid work. Now, Tesla and Elon Musk have long had a soft spot for the state of South Australia. And a while ago, a couple of years ago, in fact, our Prime Minister mocked Elon Musk, said he was an idiot, basically said he didn't know what he was talking about. Tesla was, going to, Tesla was going to ruin the weekends. Tesla's idea of a big battery was a big banana. He called it a big banana. He mocked it. He said it was a joke. Well, yeah, he was wrong. And he's been mocked so many times for what he said about Tesla. What the offer was... South Australia had a problem grid. It wasn't functioning. It was having blackouts. People were just having no power because the grid kept going down. Elon Musk said, well, that's fine. What we can do is we can put a battery in there and we can make it work in less than 100 days. If we don't get it sorted and fix your grid in 100 days, then we'll do it for free. Well, the rest is history. The battery worked so well and the operators of the battery in South Australia made so much money that they doubled the size of the battery only a year later. Now this is the area, according to reneweconomy.com.au, where the statewide system black in 2016 led to the rapid construction the following year of the original Tesla big battery. It was the biggest battery of its type in the world. At the time, it was easily the biggest, but now it's actually quite small in comparison to some other projects in other places, including the new battery that's been built in Newcastle in Australia, which will be about six times bigger. Crazy. This is where the Tesla Big Battery, officially known as the Hornsdale Power Reserve, became the first to provide synthetic inertia to the grid at scale, and where the company has also tested its landmark virtual machine mode. Virtual machine mode is what I was saying before. It's the software solution, the digital solution to the challenge of being a renewable-only grid. And we know it works. Uh, in fact, it's been proven to work. The grid in South Australia ran on renewables only for 11 straight days, and it's currently running on approximately 80 to 85% renewables on a daily basis. It will reach 100% very, very soon, within a matter of a couple of years maximum, maybe even quicker than that. This is where Tesla created its first and biggest virtual power plant through Powerwall 2 batteries in more than 5,000 homes. And it's where wind and solar have the highest penetration of local grid demand in the world. It had an average of 70% over the last year, the entire year, but for much of the year, it was running at 85%. Tesla's 
Tesla says South Australia is playing a key role in its plans to use battery storage to replace fossil fuels one plant at a time and ultimately reach a grid operating on 100% renewables. Now, I should mention, in the interview with Elon Musk, he didn't actually trash nuclear. He thinks nuclear actually is useful. But he points out that one of the key issues with nuclear is, well, it takes a long time to build it out. It's usually costs around twice as much to build as what the initial contract or the initial estimates project it will cost. Plus, people don't like living near a nuclear power plant. So normally, they actually keep a wide, a very, very wide berth away from a nuclear power plant, which means the actual land you need to build a nuclear power plant is around about three to four times bigger than the land size that they actually tell you they need. So you might see the numbers, you might be going, oh, look, that's how much land they need for nuclear. It's not true. No one wants to live near one, so they don't. It's a little bit like Chernobyl, right? They have an enormous gap between the nuclear power plant and the actual homes and cities around it. And that's been repeated everywhere that nuclear power has been built out. And because of that, as a result, solar is actually more efficient on a per square mile basis. The achievements in South Australia have been key to Tesla's plan to rapidly ramp up production, says Renew Economy, of stationary battery storage to at least one terawatt hour a year and beyond as part of its plans to have battery storage replace fossil fuels. We have one grid operator that's utilizing virtual machine mode. And they say they will not operate their grid at 100% renewables unless they have this feature, unless they have virtual machine mode working. Mike Snyder, the head of Tesla's Megapack, told the company's Investor Day event. Basically, everyone ignored this comment. They, it wasn't sexy, wasn't wasn't exciting. But it's the most revolutionary mode. It's the most revolutionary thing that has happened in the world, in my opinion, in the last century. Virtual machine mode, no one's talking about it. They should be, because it's the key to making the entire world run on renewables. It is the key. They tried without virtual machine mode and it didn't work. Virtual machine is like synthetic inertia where you turn the battery power plant through software into behaving like it's a giant spinning machine, literally, Snyder said. And that inertia stabilizes the grid. You don't need a giant spinning machine, You don't need like a huge fossil fuel power plant or a giant hydro turbine. You just have the battery connected to it and you can program it to do whatever you need at that part of the grid or even have it be dynamically changing as the grid conditions change. That's the key point. Dynamically changing as grid conditions change. Now, the grid in South Australia would black out and what would happen is South Australia had these big peaker plants, a big coal peaker plant, and a gas peaker plant. So a peaker plant is kind of like a power station that can be operated within short notice. It's only used for emergencies, which happened a lot in South Australia before the big big battery and the solar and wind build out that they've had over the last few years. So the peaker plants in South Australia were being operated quite frequently at massive, massive expense to the citizens in that state, in that city. Very expensive. Peaker plants cost between 500 to 10,000 times more than the normal cost of electricity. The reason being, they don't run off them. They have to just sit idle. They need to make their money somehow, so they charge enormous rates when they're actually in use. It takes about one to two hours for a peaker plant to turn on. So normally if your power goes out, you're like, oh, that's a bummer. And about one to two hours later, it will often come back on. But then the electricity often will spike to astronomical rates. So Tesla's big battery was operating in some measure as an actual peaker plant. They were able to undercut the cost of gas and coal peaker plants immediately, pretty much putting them out of business and bringing in massive profits to the owners of the Tesla Hornsdale big battery. Thus the reason why they doubled the size of it within a very short time frame. It was making them boatloads of cash and also providing a solution. The solution was this, a peaker plant takes a couple of hours, an hour to two hours, even sometimes a bit longer than that to actually kick into gear. Batteries take literally seconds. So the power would go out, the grid would be overwhelmed when everyone was turning their air conditioners on and on a hot day, and Tesla's big battery operating as a peaker plant would solve the issue almost immediately once the power went out or the grid was overloaded. 
Tesla says it is rapidly improving the specifications and installation costs of the Megapack batteries. One way is by using lithium iron phosphate cells, which lasts a lot longer than normal lithium ternary cells, and they're much cheaper. Tesla gets these cells from CATL. It then packages them into their own massive battery packs. And by the way, lithium iron phosphate cells seem to be less likely to set themselves on fire. That's another advantage of them. Now, because of the size and the way that Tesla now builds these packs, they're able to increase the installation speed by a factor of four. That's incredible. This cuts the total labor costs in construction and manufacturing by three times. It's one of the key reasons why Tesla has sold out now for a long time. In fact, they're sold out, I believe, until 2025. We think that this is key to unlocking our ability to scale and our customers' ability to scale with us, Snyder says. We need to be laser focused on reducing that time from when Megapack leaves the factory to when it is operational on the grid. He also noted that Tesla Megapack has twice the power density of a typical gas peaker plant. This is the future. This is where we are going, said Snyder. The Tesla team points to the experience in the South Australian virtual power plant and the huge savings it says were delivered to customers last year, particularly in the midst of the energy crisis that saw power prices surge in fact, South Australia was cut off from the rest of the energy market in Australia, but didn't matter. They were able to sort it out because of its really world-first ability to be the only grid on a large scale operating as its own renewable power plant. Drew Baglino, the head of powertrain and energy engineering, says the average cost of electricity for its customers has been $140 a month. That's Australian dollars. That's about 100 US dollars. If the customers had solar and a power wall, but the battery wasn't integrated with the grid much, that cost fell by 50%. But if the software was engaged to operate as a virtual power plant on your power wall and could operate as an intelligent way to provide grid services, then the cost turned into an average monthly revenue of US $61 a month. So if you have a power wall installed and it's connected to the virtual power plant, you just have to sign up for that and then you can be a part of the system then you can make around $61 a month. We can actually pay the customers to bring their energy services to the grid, Baglino says. That's what happened in South Australia last year. This represents the future South Australia, in particular where solar and wind supplied 70% of their energy in 2022. That compares to 30% in Texas and 35% in California, but this is an indication of where this is all headed in both centralized and distributed storage resources, providing the key to unlocking fully renewable grids. In only a few years time, South Australia will be an energy superpower. It will have what Tony Sieber refers to as a superpower. That's about 400% more energy than you need for about 98% of the year. It's inevitable that this will happen. That's the plan for, that's, that's the plan that South Australia are following. And it's a roadmap to incredible energy abundance. What will this state do when, it's, when it has 400% more energy than it currently needs? What could it build? What could it manufacture? The future, my friends, is absolutely incredible when you think about it like that. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.